It is definitely spooky season here in the Commonwealth and all across the uh, the world, I guess, or America at least. And we got another fun one for you as we've got questions for the legend of Pope Lick. And uh, I can't wait to, to hear how this ties in <laughs> into the things we do here at Nate and Mix. But we've got, he's part of the management team. He's a shop manager out there at Legend of Pope Lick. Let's welcome in Rod Whiteneck. Did I say that right? You did say that right. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks cool. for having us. I appreciate it. I, as I tell people, I have a way with words, and sometimes they get me in trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I'll see. So, well, now, as I mentioned, you know, people might be wondering how the legend of Pope Lick and everything you do out there might tie into something like this. But really, almost all the stories or a good bit of the stories tie back to someone maybe imbibing a little too much. Uh, I would say so. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, you're, this is a, a bourbon and beer podcast, basically. Uh, mm-hmm. The most good Goatman stories start with a, a fair share of bourbon or, or beer or <laughs> other altered substances. So. <laughs> I, I like it. So for those that may not understand what the legend of Pope Lick and the Goatman is, what is it? Well, let me tell you what the goat man is and what he does, and then we can delve in. If you want to go down that rabbit hole, we can explore the different origin stories, the ones I heard growing up, and then some possible explanations for what may have caused this story. Uh, the goat man himself guards the trestle uh, out at, uh, between Jaytown and Fisherville. Uh, it's the public trestle right across from public park where our shop is. Uh, he is a half man, half goat beast, uh, sort of a satyr um, that has hypnotic powers. He has these red glowing eyes. If you stare into them, he can completely hypnotize you, lure you up onto the train trestle where you won't even know that you're there. And the last thing you'll ever see aren't his eyes, but the oncoming lights of a freight train, which uh, can be an extremely bad situation for anyone. And um, he has voice mimicry. He can call out um, with the voice of your loved one, your child, your girlfriend. And again, to lure you up onto the trestles, that's his goal. And he protects those trestles. There are all kinds of rules I heard growing up. It was very detailed. Um, I know that he can run 60 miles an hour. I know that if you drive underneath the trestles at midnight on the night of a full moon, he will jump down from his trestle on top of your car and attack. Um, there are all kinds of stories and it, it, again, it's, it's fairly detailed and it's been around since, well, I think we can trace it back to the very late 1950s, maybe the early 1960s. It certainly peaked in the satanic panic era of the 1970s and the 1980s. That was, that was the height of it. And then a local filmmaker named Ron Shulnick made a short film called The Legend of the Public Monster in 1988. And if the story was going to fade, that probably wouldn't have been about the time. Maybe it went away, but his film increased interest in the public monster a thousandfold and has carried on to this day. And I would say that we at Legend of Public are probably the shepherds of the story, if anybody is at this point. Um, But even if we weren't here, I'm pretty sure the legend would continue. Well, I was going to say, it, it, it's, it's, it's cool to hear the, the stories and, and things like that, but clearly, though, people, you know, there, there is something that has to be out there or, or something that, that is causing all of that. So what, what do you say to, to those that are like, well, what is it then? What is it then? Well, there is a real danger there, and people have died on trying to cross the public trestle. It's still an active train track, and the most important thing that I can say or that we can say is do not go up on the trestles. It is dangerous. It is deadly. It's illegal. And if you want to have an experience and meet the goat man, you can come out and see us at one of our events. And I guarantee you, you will meet the goat man without risking your life. That's probably the most important thing I can hammer on. What is it that people are seeing? I can tell you stories. I've been hearing stories most of my life. And since I've opened the shop, I've had the chance to talk to people personally, and there are people that tell me they have actually encountered this creature. Um, So that's something that I can't discount. I know the reality of the danger of the trestle is probably what keeps the legend alive, but there are people that tell me they've actually seen it. I'll I'll just give you an example. Um, This guy came in, a Hispanic guy. His wife didn't speak English, but he did. 
And once he found out what we were doing, he wanted to talk to me and tell me this story that his wife had seen this creature. And I, she was there. Now, I didn't really understand what she was saying, and he was kind of translating for me. But she was hanging clothes on a clothesline, and they live along Public Road. And it was late at night, and this thing came into her yard. And she, he told me it just stared at her, and she kind of froze in terror and it looked at her and she felt like she was frozen like she couldn't move and she wanted to scream but couldn't and then this thing just hopped out outside of her yard and she ran inside and got her husband but by that point it was gone now i don't know why they would feel the need to tell me this story if nothing had happened and and based on her reactions i feel like she did see something was it a deer and she you know got carried away I don't know, possibly, but uh, maybe a buck. Maybe she never seen one before. I don't know, but she said it walked on two feet. I was gonna say I don't, I don't, I don't think a buck or a deer would be doing that, or at least I wouldn't hope so. <laughs> hope so. We right. might have uh, a few other problems uh, uh, coming coming there. So I mean, I'm guessing with you being in the shop, though, like you said, you do get to hear a lot of different tales, and mm -hmm. at some point you got to be going, well, maybe there is more to the truth to this than we think. Well, the Trestles had definitely have a deep uh, connection to a lot of people's adolescence and teenage years. Uh, so many people from so many, three, four generations, went there, brought their girlfriends and their friends on a weekend night back when there was really hardly anything around. And the, 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 the space between J-Town and the Trestle was basically all woodlands and farm. And it's now much more built up than that. But people would come out there and it felt like you were in the middle of nowhere. And lots of people have stories. Whether they encountered them or not, they remember fondly uh, these scary nights that they spent out there telling stories. Well, and, and now that's something that, that y'all get to, to do is, is to, in a sense, bring these stories to, to life and let them do it in a much safer space than being out there on the trestle, trestle which, like you said, is, is that don't, don't do that. Um, don't do and, it. Uh, uh, so for those that do come out to the Adventure Post and Legend of Pope, like, what can they expect when they come out there? Well, we're open on uh, every weekend, uh, except in the middle of winter. We have a couple months where we close down where it's freezing and you wouldn't be there anyway. But we're regularly open on the weekends on Saturday from 9 until 8 and Sunday from noon until 8. And then we're also open Tuesday and Thursday nights because they do soccer out there from 4 until 8. And if you came out on a regular night where we weren't having an event, you would find our Adventure Outpost Cryptid uh, shop. And it's a snack shop. You can get Dippin' Dots ice cream. You can get snacks. You can get, uh, we have uh, mythical meats, which are beef jerky uh, of all different kinds. You can get Bigfoot, Yeti, Loch Ness Monster, uh, elves, trolls, dragons, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and we have a gift shop. You can buy cryptid stuff and merch. We have bobbleheads, Goatman bobbleheads, Bigfoot bobbleheads, all kinds of stuff. And uh, we have Boglins. Uh, you remember those toys from the 80s? Uh, they were little puppet creatures, uh, swamp creatures. We have those. We, just all kinds of neat stuff that you're not going to find any other place. And we also have our escape rooms. Um, we have three outdoor augmented reality escape rooms where you take a laptop with you and it takes you on a hike through the park and you try to solve puzzles and get back within 90 minutes. Um, they're different themes. Uh, one of them is sort of a Harry Potter thing. It's called Magic Portal. And the other two are more spy oriented. Uh, and they're high tech. They're Operation Mindfall and Blackout. Uh, and then we have our indoor escape rooms right at the shop. One of them is called Circus Train Save the Goat Man. And that is based on the local urban legend. And that's that is currently my favorite one we've ever built. Um, it takes you back in time to the early days of the Shulnick Brothers Circus, and we haven't discussed the goat man's origin yet, but you're trying to rescue the baby while he's still an infant from the circus before he grows up into this mean, nasty beast, and you try to break the curse. Um, and then we have a new one that's under construction. We're going to debut it for Christmas this year. It's called Project Arctic, and it's Yeti-themed. And so you will be going to an Arctic... Uh, outpost in search of a yeti well i i, I love that and, and like you said mm -hmm. in addition to all of that you guys do have events that, that happen i know you got some events coming up here as we yes, finish do. out sp the 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 full spooky season and, and halloween and so so forth so what events are heading up there that people can also enjoy well 
for the next two weekends, we're still doing our Goat Man Escape, which is probably the most popular event that we host every year. And it takes place in the woods. You're given a flashlight and sit out with your group. But unlike just a regular haunted trail with monsters and actors, we have that. We have monsters, we have actors, we have sets. But you also have to solve puzzles from scene to scene. And these are, these are very clever puzzles. And if you do it correctly and you win, you may be able to survive a Goatman attack because he will be stalking you the entire time you're out there. And I guarantee you, whether you win or whether you not, you're going to encounter the Goatman. Um, and the other thing we have going is in two weeks, our Halloween weekend event, which is called Sam Hain Weekend. Now, I know it's pronounced Samhain, and I'm probably going to get a call from Glenn Danzig telling me this. But we're calling it the Sam Hain Weekend. And we're showing horror movies at night on a 40-foot inflatable screen. Uh, one night, we're showing The Craft. Uh, and the other night, we're showing Trick or Treat. And that will have full concessions and uh, treats and uh, West Six and probably a Third Turn Brewery. And uh, they'll have they'll be selling stuff so you can get a drink, you can get a snack, you can get popcorn from Froggy's Popcorn, the best popcorn place in town, I might add, and watch a movie and do an escape. So it's, say, there's quite a bit going on. That's what I was going to say, a, a lot going on. But like you said, at the heart of all of this is the Goat Man. And that's right. you know, the, that, that origin story, you want to explain maybe the, the or, where yeah. the origin story came and, and how why we are doing all this fun stuff these days? Of course. Um, now, there are several different versions of the Goatman story, depending on who you talk to and where you heard it. I'm going to tell you first the one that we use at, at the shop for all of our attractions. It's, it's the first one I heard when I was a kid. Uh, I probably first heard about the Goatman when I was five years old. Uh, there was a girl next door that for some reason had heard this story, and she said, haven't you heard about the Goatman of Pope Lick or the Pope Lick monster? And I hear pricked up uh, because, you know, I was a kid that watched um, all that 70s Bigfoot stuff and In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy and uh, all those, uh, you know, uh, Legend of Boggy Creek and and Sasquatch documentaries and things like that. So, so I was pricked up because I'm like, oh, we have one of those here in town. And the story that I was told was that the goat man was, he was found by a traveling circus. He was an infant that was somewhat mutated. He may have had little stubs on his head and maybe more like hooves than feet. And they took him in captivity and they raised him for decades to be the money pump for their freak show. So he was treated horribly. He was locked into a cha uh, train car in chains for decades and whipped into submission daily and fed nothing but table scraps from the carny vendors and basically just became this mean, nasty beast who, for all good reasons, hated humanity because he was treated so poorly. And years later, the train was traveling through uh, town on its way to Louisville for a circuit show and lightning struck the trestles and the train derailed. And we don't know what happened to the circus people. They all disappeared. But we know that Goatman escaped into the woods and he's been out there ever since and he has these powers and he lures people to their to their demise. And that's probably the most popular story. Uh, there is several other variants of the story, one of them involving a farmer who is a practicing Satanist who did this cult ritual with a goat and managed to summon up this goat demon creature. Um, and, and that's the G-rated version. The other version I don't really talk about very much. So... Gotcha, gotcha, and you can you extrapolate. Know, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah. Um, Involve the sheep. Okay, <laughs> and, that's all I'm saying. And and that's all we. That uh, if you can't mm -hmm. figure it out, that's probably for the best. And it's probably and, yeah. And and you you talk about that that legend and how it's been able to to live on. You know, what is it like to be able to kind of be part of that? You know, your team, the, the group out there, to kind of be part of that legend now and let it live on. In a much safer way too. Well, it's it's very interesting, really. I'll I'll be honest because it's something that I heard at such a young age um, that made an impact me and was locally based. It's local mythology, and if you want to call it mythology. And years ago, when I first started with Michael Book, and shortly after Brian Ward and and, and Chad Biddick came on, and and Katie Rogers. Um, that's really the core of our team. Uh, we, uh, 
we were in the haunt business basically um just like everybody else just like connor hotel and grim trails and nightmare forest and there's there's a lot of great haunts in this area and we uh we're looking for something to do because we we have danger run is a puzzle solving driving game that we've done that's now 30 years old that was way before my time uh started by joe bullet and 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 uh and Jim Bullet and uh, QMF and they, they, there's a whole backstory to, to Danger Run. Um, but we had different haunts that we would send people out to visit on Danger Run. And as it goes, you, you there's only so many haunts in town that you can send people to. And eventually we're like, you know, we got some feedback. They're like, well, are you going to ever pick anybody different? And then we're like, well, there's only so many haunts in town that we can pick. Maybe we need to do one ourselves. And uh, that's kind of where the legend of public started uh the Polk, the parklands had just opened and uh michael and joe went out and had a meeting with the parklands and to be honest i think most of us i can't speak for them personally but i think most of us thought they would just go say no you know there's already a bad reputation there's been accidents at the train track why do we want to be part of this but for some shocking reason, they, they actually thought our idea was okay. Um, and they've been great to work with, to be honest with you. For the last eight years or so, uh, the Parklands is awesome. And we explained to them that we're not trying to exploit anything. Uh, we want to have some fun with this legend. It comes up every Halloween. And what if we could add some local lore to the, the haunt scene? And so we did. We ended up building this haunt, uh, and and uh, I'm not really a builder. Brian and Michael and Chad handled most of that stuff, and their designs were fantastic. And we created this huge trail, uh, and it was awesome. But uh, the, the problem with the trail is it was so much labor to build, and we are in a public park now. So it has to be torn down right after haunt season. So it's like two, three months of solid labor in the middle of summer when it's 99 degrees outside in the woods, full of bugs. You can, you can, people just have no idea, to be honest, how hard that was. And then we have to tear it down immediately. So we can't leave it up for next year. So basically, I don't think it was ever going to be able to get bigger than we got it. It was a 30 minute trail and it was awesome. But uh, we're not, we're not spring chickens anymore. None of us are. Uh, and I don't know that we could continue to do that year after year after year. So eventually we decided we were building escape games. We had several. Uh, we did one called the Spirits of Scrooge for several years in uh, Paris Town at Christmas. Uh, we had a haunted one that we used at our uh, Halloween fest. It was a haunted mansion themed. And we, and we were starting to get pretty good at building these escape rooms. And uh, we said, well, what if we, what if we, condense the haunt a little bit um so it wouldn't be as brutal but include these puzzle solving elements to make it more fun that way you could win you could lose you will still encounter the goat man he's like the santa claus of our attraction you know if you go to the macy's parade you know santa claus is going to show up at the end he has to same thing for our attraction goat man's going to be there at the end no matter what um and and that's i think probably the best decision we ever made um so we've been doing this for several years now and and i think it works really good well and like you said you, you've, you've been able to put together not only an amazing attraction but the gift shop is, is so unique and so many cool right. folks can get there you know so i mean it, it's really a full experience and, and different things and and if folks want to find out more information about how, where to go how to get there everything like that where do they need to go they need to go to thelegendofpopelick.com. We have a Facebook page. You know, we've got Instagram. We've got every social media thing you could possibly imagine. But if you go to thelegendofpopelick.com or the most fun you've ever had.com, that will take you to our other stuff like Danger Run as well. But it's all connected. But if you look us up, Legend of Public on, on Facebook, that can send you right to where you want to go. To get tickets to book if you want. And, uh, and we'd love to see you. Well, I, I hope people will take the time to do that. And uh, like you said, they don't go out to the trestle. They come to the Legend of Popelik and, and have a fun time and a safe time. And, Rod, thank you for sharing the story of the Goat Man and uh, a little history with us. Yeah, any time, man. You want to talk about this? or We'll talk about next year we'll have the Goat Man Fest 3. Goat Man Fest 2 was last weekend. That's the probably our biggest event of the year. If you want to talk again next year, you know, just give us a call. Absolutely.
Stay scared.